In this section, we'll learn about another form of force or dynamics problem. Quick review. Now we started forces with 1D force problems in a horizontal direction. The forces on an object impact the change of motion in left-right directions, influencing that horizontal acceleration. Then we move to problems where the forces act in an up and down direction, influencing the vertical acceleration. We eventually got into some 2D force problems, where a combination of forces, often vertical and horizontal, influenced the acceleration of an object at some angle. So what's the common thread among all these problems that we've looked at in the past? Well, note that we treated the forces as if they acted on the middle or center of mass of the object. And thus, the motion of the object is always a translation. That is, all the points on the object move in the exact same direction together. In this section, we recognize that forces don't always act through the center of mass, potentially causing the object to rotate. In order to understand rotational problems, we need to understand the concept of torque. Now you've probably thought about torque when you tried to remove a lid on a jar of honey, or when you tried to loosen a really tight bolt on a car. Let's first establish our torque equation. Tau, which is a fancy T in our symbol for torque, is equal to R times F, or R cross F, where R is the radius of rotation, or distance from the pivot point, that is the bolt in this case, to the force, Well, F is the force causing this torque. Now, they're all vectors, so we could put arrows above them just to remind us of this. Now let's go back to that operator in the middle here. Yes, it looks a lot like a regular multiplication sign from back in our pre-algebra days. But when used with vectors, we call it a cross product or a vector product. For the first set of torque situations, you can just treat it as a multiplication. But when we get further into the angled force questions, we'll explain further that it's not quite the same as just multiplying. So let's get a feel for this equation. Now we can appreciate that the force, in Newtons like usual, has an impact on our torque. The more force we put into our twist, the bigger the torque, and that makes total sense. So what about that distance r? If the bolt is really tight, you need to apply a big force to twist it off. But often, there's only so much force that you can apply. So, Here's a little trick that everyone who regularly works on old cars or trucks understands. If you can't seem to apply enough force to twist a bolt off, you can find a longer wrench or extend the wrench with a pipe. Now, the force is still the same, but the distance is twice as large in this case, and we get twice the torque. And suddenly, we're able to turn that bolt with the same amount of force being applied. And that's why we have this radius in the torque equation. The greater the distance from the center of rotation to where the force is applied, the greater the torque. Here's a little related tip. If you ever worry about getting a flat tire in your car and possibly being unable to get those lug nuts off, you can prepare by throwing a breaker bar in your trunk. A breaker bar is just an extra long wrench, which we know now allows for a greater torque. Thus, if you have a flat, removing the lug nuts is a lot easier. The same force can cause a much greater torque when using a longer wrench. Now, this tip comes with a warning. If you keep a breaker bar around, you have to be careful when you tighten things, as it's suddenly easier to over torque and break bolts. You'll have to learn to use that mechanical advantage carefully, so you don't generate too much torque 
and unintentionally break things. 